Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Good, good to see you. Good evening, teacher. Okay, welcome. All right. Let's begin as usual. First things first. Um, the attendance list. Okay, Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Um, Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Welcome. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Gabriela Loure Sequeira Bernal. Present. Hello. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Javier Ernesto Lucero Escobar. Present. Welcome. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortés. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Jose Arturo Ramírez Bernal. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Jose Eraibín Enríquez. Present teacher. Welcome. Madeline Diana Cerón de Paz. Good evening, present. Good evening. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Present teacher. Welcome. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Present teacher. Welcome. Noemí Alicia Estrada Palacios. I'm here, teacher. Present. Welcome. Welcome. Reina Isabel Romero Ventura. Hi. Hello. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Rufino Amilcar Hernández Linares. Present teacher. Hello. Janet Yanira Rodríguez Andres. Present teacher. Welcome. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Andrea Michelle García Selva. César Alexander Ramírez Ramírez. César Alexander Ramírez. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Ricardo Ernesto Ramírez Quijano. Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. All right, let's begin. Everybody, welcome. Once again, this is Advanced English 2, and that's me, Ivan Donyang, at your service. Once again, so everybody, welcome. And this is session 11, and today is October the 11th of 2023. Okay, so welcome once again. We need to continue with section number three, and right now we need to go over exercise 3.5. How do you feel about the internet? Okay, we're going to solve this exercise right here, right now. So everybody take a look. 
uh, listen to Edward Ting and Maria talking about how they use the internet. Who do you think is the most enthusiastic about the internet? I'm going to play the track twice. The first time, I just want you to listen, and I want you to identify the person you consider is the most enthusiastic about the internet. The second time, I'm going to play it, and we're going to do exercise B. But for now, just listen to it, pay close attention, and tell me who the most enthusiastic person is. I'm going to play the track. Please let me know if you can hear it. How do you feel about the internet? Did you hear that? Yes, yes teacher. Teacher. thank yes. you yes. thanks Clearly. for your confirmation thank you thank you okay let's do it a listen to edward ting and maria talking about how they use the internet who do you think is the most enthusiastic about the internet our question today is how do you feel about the internet Call in and let us know. Here's our first caller. What's your name? It's Edward. Hi, Edward. How do you feel about the Internet? Well, I use it every day at work. It's true that it makes my life easier. Email and instant messaging are especially useful for me at work. When I'm at home, I do a little online shopping because it's just so convenient. There's no doubt that it's a useful tool, but it's not healthy to spend too much time with it, if you ask me. Okay. Thanks, Edward. Let's take another call. Hello? What's your name? I'm Ting. How do you feel about the Internet, Ting? Well, basically, I'm the outdoorsy type, and I'd much rather be kayaking or hiking than web surfing. But I'll admit that the Internet is the best place to get the news, so I'll go online for a couple of minutes a day. Plus, I'm taking this class that's only offered online, so I have to use the Internet for that class and to do homework for it, too. So I'd have to say that online is not my favorite place to be. Fair enough, Ting. We've got time for one more call. Hello? What's your name? Maria. How do you feel about the Internet, Maria? Well, I don't know how I'd live without it. I use it at work, of course, but that's only the beginning. As soon as I get home, I log on to my favorite chat room to talk to my friends. We've all got webcams set up so we can see each other, too. Plus, I'm always downloading the latest computer games I love to play. Oh, and I've just started my own blog. When I'm online, I'm having so much fun that I sometimes forget the time and... Well, that's all we have time for today. Tune in again tomorrow for this special show. Where Maria got interrupted. Okay, um, who do you think is the most enthusiastic about the internet? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Jenny Elizabeth. Uh, the Maria is more enthusiastic. Okay, Maria is the most enthusiastic of the bunch. That is correct. Okay, thank you, Jenny. All right, now we're going to do exercise B. So what is exercise B all about? Okay, take a look. Um, does Edward, E, Ting, T, or Maria M mention these uses of the internet? Write the correct letter. Okay, so it's E, T, or M. All right, so I'm going to play, uh, sorry, it's chat rooms. Number two is news, number three, webcams, number four, downloading, number five, computer games, number six, blogs, number seven, email, number eight, instant messaging, number nine, online courses, and number 10, online shopping. So I want you to listen and identify um, the topics each of these, uh, each of the speakers mentioned. Okay, so uh, remember, if it is for Edward, write an E, if it's Sting, a T, and Maria, an M. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'm going to play the track second time. Everybody, please listen to it. How do you feel about the internet? A. Listen to Edward, Ting, and Maria talking about how they use the internet. Who do you think is the most enthusiastic about the internet? Our question today is, how do you feel about the internet? Call in and let us know. Here's our first caller. What's your name? It's Edward. Hi, Edward. How do you feel about the internet? 
Well, I use it every day at work. It's true that it makes my life easier. Email and instant messaging are especially useful for me at work. When I'm at home, I do a little online shopping because it's just so convenient. There's no doubt that it's a useful tool, but it's not healthy to spend too much time with it, if you ask me. Okay. Thanks, Edward. Let's take another call. Hello? What's your name? I'm Ting. How do you feel about the internet, Ting? Well, basically, I'm the outdoorsy type, and I'd much rather be kayaking or hiking than web surfing. But I'll admit that the internet is the best place to get the news, so I'll go online for a couple of minutes a day. Plus, I'm taking this class that's only offered online, so I have to use the internet for that class and to do homework for it too. So I'd have to say that online is not my favorite place to be. Fair enough, Ting. We've got time for one more call. Hello? What's your name? Maria. How do you feel about the internet, Maria? Well, I don't know how I'd live without it. I use it at work, of course, but that's only the beginning. As soon as I get home, I log on to my favorite chat room to talk to my friends. We've all got webcams set up so we can see each other, too. Plus, I'm always downloading the latest computer games I love to play. Oh, and I've just started my own blog. When I'm online, I'm having so much fun that I sometimes forget the time and... Well, that's all we have time for today. Tune in again tomorrow for this special show. All right, then. So what about number one, chat rooms? Who mentions that? Biden. Number one, Maria. Number one will be Maria. So it's letter M. That's correct. Okay, very good. Noemi, and then Jeanette. Uh, Noemi, number two. How about the news? Number two, letter T. Ting, that's correct. Very good. Thank you. Janet, Janita, number three. What about webcams? Webcams, uh, Maria. Maria. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much. Uh, Ana Filomena, number four, downloading. Uh, Maria. Maria, too. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much. Jenny Elizabeth, number five, computer games. Who mentioned that? It's Maria. It's Maria, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you very much. What about number six? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Jose Arturo. Maria. It's Maria, too. Yeah, that's correct. Very good. Number seven, email. Who knows the answer? Edward. Uh, who said that? <laughs> Okay. Is it Jenny? Jenny. Okay. Yeah, that's Edward. correct. It's Edward. That's right. Okay. Miss Romero, number eight, instant messaging. Who mentioned that? Me. Hey, Edward. It's Edward, too. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you. About number nine, online courses. Who talked about online courses? Raise your hand if you know the answer, please. Ana Filomena? Team. It was Teng. Yeah, that's correct. And number 10, the last one, who talked about online shopping? Who talked about that? Ana Filomena. Edward. It was Edward. Okay, those are the answers. There you go. Those are the answers to this exercise. And then uh, remember, this is uh, section 3.5, okay, in the platform. Um, we have it here. It's pretty much the same. Okay. Now, uh, the instructions, again, are listen to Edward Ting and Maria talk about how they use the internet, who is the most enthusiastic about the internet. So it's Maria, right? And uh, then the instructions, does Edward Ting or Maria mention the uses of the internet? Write only the letter of the names of, the, of these people. Just the letter, okay? Don't forget to type the letters in capitals, okay? So if it is not capital, it will be taken as wrong, I understand. So um, pretty much the same answers, okay? Nothing has changed right here. So it's, it's, it's the same from previous exercise. Okay, so um, can you give me a second, please? Uh, just a moment. All right, I'm back. Um, here we go. 
Let's continue. It's uh, 3.6. In this class, participants will learn to use expressions for concerning, for connecting, I'm sorry, ideas formally. So that's section 3.6. Let's do this. Connecting ideas formally. Okay, it's a vocabulary section. These expressions connect ideas in different ways. Put them in the columns below. Sometimes more than one answer is possible. So what we need to do here is we need to classify all of these expressions. And the expressions are, they're in this box right here, which is, I mean, it can hardly be seen. Maybe I can do something about it. Um, I don't think I can. Okay, yeah, just because it can hardly be seen. I'm just going to insert a form here, a shape, not a form, it's a shape. And now, nothing in there. Okay, now you can see it better, all right? There's like the uh, box. So the expressions are additionally, as a result, for example, for instance, furthermore, Indeed, in fact, likewise, nevertheless, on the other hand, similarly, and therefore. So we need to classify these expressions in the right category. And the categories are add information. For example, the first one additionally goes in the first category. Additionally adds information. Then you have compare or contrast. Then emphasize. The next one is give an example. And the last one is show result. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to give you four minutes, okay? For you to classify all the expressions in the box in the five different categories right here. After uh, four minutes, we're going to check answers together and uh, provide some feedback on it. So uh, four minutes beginning right now. Let's do this.
All right, time is up. So we, we're going to go over the expressions one by one. Okay, so additionally, then number, the second one is as a result. Where would you put this expression? Nadia, and then Byron. In my opinion, is a uh, give a uh, example. As a result. See. Si. Well, um, let's take a look at all the categories you have. As a result, add information, compare or contrast, emphasize, give an example, show result. Where would you put show it? Show result. Show result. result. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so show result as a result. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, Byron, for example, how about this one? For example, I think is given example. Give an example, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. Okay, yeah, that's right. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Janet, I don't know if you want to participate. Janet? Or or your hand is simply up. I don't know. Uh, my hand is, is up, but okay. All right. Uh, I think uh, for instance mm -hmm. is the same. Give a, give an example. That is correct. For instance, okay, you're giving an example. You can say for instance, for example. Okay, very good. All right, for the next one. Okay, you have furthermore. Furthermore. How about this one? Who wants to participate? Or Ms. I Romero and then uh, uh, Nadia. Okay, Ms. Romero. I think it is um, to add information. Add information. That is correct. Okay, yeah, that's right. You use furthermore to add information, but it has two more uses actually. You can do it to add information, to emphasize, and also to give an example, okay? Mm -hmm. Furthermore, it can also be used to give examples. Okay, not as commonly, okay, but it can be used that way too. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nadia, about indeed. Is emphasis, emphasize. Yeah. Emphasize, indeed. That is correct, okay? When you say something, when you say indeed, you're emphasizing what you just said or what another person has said. So uh, that's correct. Thank you very much. What about in fact? About this one, where will you put it? Emphasize teacher. Who's, who said that? Sorry? Janira. Ah, okay, Janira. Uh, emphasize. All right, yeah, that is correct. Okay, it's uh, in fact. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, for the next one, likewise. What about likewise? Raise your hand if you want to participate, please. Maritza Isabel. Uh, compare or contrast? Compare or contrast. That is correct. Okay, you use likewise to compare. Okay, that's, that's right. Very good. Thank you. How about the next one? Nevertheless, Jose Arturo. Your microphone. Is emphasize. Emphasize. Okay. Nevertheless, um, sorry, but no, it's, you don't use it to emphasize things. But you get a second opportunity. Or not. Okay. Uh, Jenny Elizabeth, and then Nadia. Okay. I think it's uh, nevertheless. It's a compare of contrast. Nevertheless, is for is to compare or contrast. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Nevertheless, it's uh it's an expression that you use to contrast two points. Okay, that's right. Nevertheless is similar to however. Okay, however, nevertheless, pretty much the same. Okay, um, how about the next one, Nadia? On the other hand. Yes. Yes, teacher. Uh, yes, Nadia. Okay. Uh, how and, about. And the... uh -huh. And on the other hand is compare or contrast. Compare or contrast, that's right. You have on the one hand, this and this happens. On the other hand, okay, you're comparing two situations. Very good, thank you. 
And uh, what about the next one? Similarly, raise your hand if you know the answer. Similarly, Ana Filomena? Comparing contrast. Comparing contrast, yeah, it's, it's a comparison. That's correct. Thank you, Ana Filomena. And the last one, therefore, Maritza Isabel. Emphasize. Emphasize. Yes. Mm, unfortunately, no. It's not used to emphasize things. But you get a second opportunity. Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, no yeah. problem. Okay, but thank you for your participation. Alejandro Quintanilla. Show result, teacher. Show result. That is correct. Yeah. You use therefore to show a result. In Spanish, it's like Por lo tanto, okay, therefore, okay, so it shows a result pretty much. Okay, thank you very much. Always remember if you're not participating, uh, mute your microphones, okay, because uh, the background noise gets into the class and it becomes confusing. So, uh, yeah, that's right. So you have the, the, the expressions to add information, you have additionally and furthermore. To compare and contrast, you have likewise, nevertheless, on the other hand, and similarly. To emphasize, you use the expressions furthermore, indeed, and in fact. To give an example, okay, you use for example, for instance, and furthermore. And to show result, you have as a result and therefore. Okay, all those expressions right there. I'm going to just pause a little bit and I'm going to call some of the names from the attendance list. Ana Yanira Mendoza, you're here, right? Yeah, totally, you're here. Yes, teacher. Welcome, welcome. Andrea Michelle Garcia Selva. Present teacher. Welcome. Okay. Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Cesar here. Debbie Natalia Segura. Debbie Natalia. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzman. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzman. Iris Regina Hernandez Cuellar. Yes, here, teacher. Welcome. Ricardo Ernesto Ramirez Quijano. I am here, teacher. Welcome. Thank you. Yanira Mendoza. Yanira, you're raising your hand. Yes, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that uh, likewise is for ad information. Likewise is to add information. No, it's to establish a comparison, to say that two things are similar. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly to add information, it's, it's, or, or, uh, it's, it's more like to compare. You're comparing two things that are similar. Um, mm -hmm. That's the thing. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, uh, well, let us continue now. Now you have uh, some expressions that you can use to connect ideas formally. Okay, now for the next exercise, because we don't have much time, so already 8.30, uh, we go with exercise 3.8, which is the knowledge check. This time you have to show me that you understand how to use them. Circle the appropriate connector to complete the sentences. This exercise is in the platform. So um, I want you to uh, tell me which connector you will use. What about the first one? You have Tom loves technology, similarly, or for example, he has the latest cell phone. Who wants to participate? You have to choose the right connector. Raise your hand if you know the answer. Maritza Isabel. For example? For example. Tom Lowe's technology. For example, he has the latest cell phone. The latest cell phone. That's correct. Okay, Tom Lowe's technology. For example, he has the latest cell phone. That is right. Thank you, Maritza. Byron and then Noemi. Byron, number two. Many cities have wireless hotspots, nevertheless, or in fact, others don't. It's nevertheless. Many cities have wireless hotspots, nevertheless, others don't. Uh -huh. Many cities have uh, wireless hotspots, nevertheless, you're stating a contrast, okay? Others don't. It's like, however, other cities don't. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Byron. That is correct. Okay, uh, Noemi Alicia, number three. Mo most students do research online now. Nevertheless, or therefore, internet accessing libraries is not is a necessity. How about this one? Most students do the search online 
Now, therefore, internet access in library is a necessity. It's a necessity, yeah. Therefore, okay, because they do research online now, okay, therefore, as a result, internet access in libraries is a necessity, okay? Thank you very much. Um, what about number four? Th thank you, thank you, Naomi. Thank you very much. What about number four? Some websites aren't reliable as a result, or likewise, many people are being misinformed. Nadia Isolina and then Ana Filomena. Um, number four, websites aren't readable. As a result, many people are be being misinformed. Yeah, some websites aren't reliable, right? Pronunciation right there, reliable. As a result, many people are being misinformed. In other words, they get wrong information. Thank you very much. Now, Ana Filomena and then Ms. Romero. Number five, it's the internet. They, okay, please, they... please. The internet changes fast. Uh, likewise, that is the pronunciation, teacher. Likewise. 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 So do cell phones. Yeah, the internet changes fast. Likewise, so do cell phones. Okay, in other words, in a similar way, cell phones also change fast. Basically, cell phones now adapt. Uh, to the to the new technologies emerging, particularly internet technology. Okay, I remember like what twenty years ago, everybody had like cell phones that were very 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 different from the ones <laughs> that we have right now. Okay, uh, but once every everyone had like um, internet access from the phone, okay, everything changed and everything became just you know touch technology. Uh, Reina Isabel Romero, number six. Um, block for everything. Furthermore, they are updated frequently. Uh, blocks cover cover everything. Okay. Furthermore, they are updated frequently. That's correct. Okay. That's right. They are updated frequently. Very good. Okay. Very good. You have a good command on the use of the connectors right here. Now there is an exercise also in the platform, which is three point eight. Same thing, okay. I'm sorry about the very small, you know, writing. It, it can hardly be seen, okay. But the answers remain the same, okay. So it's same answers, okay. So there you go. Tom loves technology. For example, he has the latest cell phone. Number two, many cities have wireless hotspots. Nevertheless, others don't. Most students do research online now. Therefore, internet access in libraries is a necessity. Number four, some websites aren't available. As a result, many people are being misinformed. Number five, the internet changes fast. Likewise, so do cell phones and blogs cover everything. Furthermore, they are updated frequently. Okay, so those are the answers to uh, the exercise uh, 3.8 in the platform. Okay, so let's move on. We're covering a lot of material today, okay? <laughs> But okay, there's some grammar section that we need to study too, and it's probably not going to be that fast, but let's do this. Okay, um, just continuing here, okay? We're going to go over the next starting point, okay? And that's the future shock, future shock. Read these comments about technology. Do you agree or disagree? What's your take on technology? Your take on technology means your opinion in this context. Sorry. Okay. Uh, your take on the internet means on technology. I'm sorry. Means your opinion on technology. So um, we have the first one by Ju Chang from Seoul. I need a volunteer to help me read the first take on technology, please. Byron, thank you very much. Okay. Ju Chang from Seoul. I get email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? Wouldn't it be great if Everyone had a cell phone like that. Okay, as I said before, this book is dated. <laughs> this book is dated. I mean, now everybody has a cell phone like that and much better than the one you're seeing in the picture. So yeah, I get email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? Wouldn't it be great if everyone had a cell phone like that? Well, yeah. 
nowadays that's the reality. So uh, thank you, Byron. Okay, everyone has a cell phone where you can get your email. Not just one account, but several accounts. Okay, and you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. So. Uh, do you have any questions about the vocabulary in the first take on technology that Byron just read? Any questions? No questions. Okay, then. So again, uh, the person says, I get email on my cell phone. That's nice, isn't it? Okay. Wouldn't it be great if everyone had a cell phone like that? No sería grandioso, ¿verdad? Si todos tuvieran un teléfono así. Okay. So that's his question. What about the second one? Sarah from Los Angeles. I need a volunteer to help me read this. Sarah from Los Angeles. Volunteers? Not everybody at the same time. Thank you. Nadia, and then for the next one, we have Jenny Elizabeth. Sarah, Los Angeles. Don't, don't you think there are too many websites? And moms are full of missing information. Misinformation. Not, Sorry. Missing misinformation. Mm -hmm. Should should not uh, the government limit the number of the sites? Yeah, Sarah says, don't you think there are too many websites, and most are full of misinformation? In other words, information that is false. Shouldn't the government limit the number of sites okay she's saying that's her opinion on the internet too many websites and too much misinformation in them okay her opinion okay well do you have any questions about the vocabulary in the second piece of text me teacher who's me okay nadia uh, what is the meaning me misinformation Misinformation is information that is false. Nowadays, wow, okay, there's a lot. It, it is true. So she has a point right here. There is a lot of this information on the internet, but a lot. Okay, and uh, uh, you can see it also nowadays in, on social media, right? You get the news on Facebook, you get the news on Twitter. Well, it's not Twitter anymore, it's X. <laughs> uh, you get the news on Instagram and, and pretty much everything. A every platform has some sort of, of, of uh, users pretty much that uh, provide news. But a lot of the news that you see on the internet are made up. Okay, so a lot of the news, I'm sorry, you see on the internet is made up. And uh, and that's misinformation. It's pretty much information that is not factual, that is not true, okay? Somebody invented it or manipulated it. That's the meaning of it, misinformation. Especially when there are uh, political interests, okay? This happens a lot, okay? There's a lot of misinformation. Okay, then, um, Jenny Elizabeth, Sao Paulo. I mean, Anna from Sao Paulo. <laughs> Okay. okay, can you help me read it? Okay. Anna Sao Paulo. Isn't it where show how some people are always on their cell phones? They don't notice anything around them. It's actually dangerous, don't you think? Okay, thank you. Anna from Sao Paulo says, isn't it weird how some people are always on their cell phones? Like this, right? Uh, they don't notice anything around them, okay? Once they are immersed in their words, in their cell phones, okay? They don't see anything else. They don't hear anything else that can happen. It's actually dangerous, don't you think? I've seen people crossing the street, you know, watching the phone. Some people are driving while watching the phone, okay? So um, any questions right here? Jenna, Janita, do you have a question or do you want to read? I want to read, teacher. Okay, you want to read. Okay, so uh, the last one. Yang Ming from Taipei, Taiwan, right? Yang Ming, Taipei. Doesn't it seem like kids spend too much time in front of the TV? It makes them lazy, doesn't it? Yeah, doesn't it seem like kids spend too much time in front of the TV? 
it makes them lazy, doesn't it? Okay, that's right. Especially these days that we have uh, streaming TV, we have these services, Netflix, okay, you have Hulu, uh, HBO Max and all those, okay? Now you can choose whatever you wanna see, uh, when you want to see it and as many episodes as you want to see. So yeah, These kids are spending a lot of time in front of the TV more than ever these days. So there you go. That's uh, Yang Ming from Taipei. Does anyone does anyone have questions about the vocabulary in here? No questions. Okay then. So um, all right, that's their take on technology. Okay, and and again, this this take on technology is a little bit dated. Okay, because the book is uh, came out a few years ago. Okay. So what are we going to do now? There's another vocabulary exercise, okay? And uh, similar to the one we sold before, I'm going to give you some minutes so you can complete it. I'm going to copy this actually here so you can see better. Just give me a second. Okay. There's the box. Okay, so where do you find these forms of communication? Put them in the columns below, then add another expression to each category, which is not necessary in this case. I just want you to classify, you know, the expressions right here. So you have banner ads, billboards, boss wraps, crawls. You know, crawls are those like very small ads that you see on TV. They are not that common anymore, but they were very common in the past, particularly when when people were watching uh, soccer matches. Okay, that because they cannot interrupt the match. Okay, you could see like small ads at the bottom of the screen, like running from left to right. Okay, so that's a crawl. Uh, the next one is flyers, infomercials, neon signs, pop up ads, spam telemarketers, text messaging, and voicemail. I'm going to give you four minutes, one more time, to classify the expressions in the four categories, which are on television, on the internet, on the telephone, and on streets or highways. If there is a word that you don't know, you have the opportunity also to look it up in the dictionary. Okay, so if you have a good dictionary, you can look it up on the internet, of course, right? Because <laughs> why not? Uh, you can do it, okay? You can totally do it. So I'm going to give you four minutes for you to complete this activity. And after that, we're going to check answers together. Four minutes beginning right now. Janita. Teacher, excuse me. Uh, which is the exercise? The exercise is you need to classify the expressions in this box into the four different categories on television, on the internet, on the telephone, and on streets or highways. Where okay. do you see the, where do you find these forms of uh, communication? Okay, teacher, thank you. All right, you're welcome.
All right, time is up. Let's check answers. What do we have? Um, the first one is banner ads. Where would you expect to find banner ads? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Noemi, Alicia. On the I'm sorry? On the street or highways, teacher? On the streets or highways. Well, I see your point, but not really. It's not on the streets or highways. On the streets or highways, you find a different type of advertisement that is very similar to that, but in more in a more physical format. Uh, but thank you for your participation. Let's see what Byron has to say about it, about banner ads. Um, banner ads yeah, on television. Okay. Um, Remember, we, we can participate if we raise our hands. Okay, it is it is Byron's turn. So Byron, sorry. No. On the internet. Ah, yeah. In the... oh, on the internet. Okay. All right. So banner ads. Mm -hmm. The answer is yeah, they're found on the internet. So what banner ads? Some of you may say internet. like, but but. Okay. Okay, thank you. So some of you may say like, but but a banner, a banner, you say, es un letrero, un rotulo. Okay, yeah, that's correct. But a banner ad is that kind of ad that you usually find on websites. Okay, you enter a website and then you see a banner. It's like an ad that takes uh, all this space from left to right on the screen. Okay, but very little uh, vertical space. It takes a lot of horizontal space, but very little vertical space. They're very easy to find. I cannot show them to you because I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed to do it. And number two, because I'm using a browser that automatically uh, blocks all forms of advertisement. So um, I, I simply can't. But that's a, that's a banner ad. Noemi Alicia. Um, what about billboards? Billboards on the street or highways. Yeah, that's right. Those are on the street or highways. Okay. That's a billboard. You see like a big sign on the street, okay, advertising a movie or a product or a store or something like that. That's a billboard, okay? That's a billboard. Very good. Alejandro Quintanilla, bus wraps. Alejandro? Yeah, I'm sorry, teacher. On okay. streets or highways, teacher? On streets or highways, yeah. You see the bus wraps on streets or highways. Specifically, that's those are the ads that you see on the buses, okay, on the side of the bus. That's the bus wrap, okay? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you very much. Okay, um, what about the next one? Um, crawls. Where do you see crawls? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Where do you usually see the crawls? Alejandro again, okay. In, in on television, teacher. On television, okay, that's yes. right. Again, as I explained just a moment ago, those are like the little ads that you see running from left to right. Yes. On the, you know, at the bottom of the screen, okay? Those are the crawls. Yes. Okay, usually when you're watching sports, Okay, because like, like a strip on the bottom of, of, of the screen, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. They appear at the bottom of the screen, okay, where you can just like read them, but they don't really interrupt the program you're watching. And they run from left to right, like while you are watching another, another program. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yes. Particularly sport events, yes. because you cannot pause them, okay, for commercials. So that's why we have crawls. Okay, thank you. That's correct. What about flyers? Jose Arturo. Um, on street and highways. On the street or highways. Yeah, that's right. The flyers are like those little pieces of paper that usually uh, there are people on the street like giving you flyers. Okay, giving you flyers. You pick a flyer, they usually contain some information, usually about uh, restaurants, particularly fast food, but also, you know, they can advertise any other sort of information, like, for example, banks, okay, or uh, some other businesses. Okay, that's that's really good. Thank you. Um, what about infomercials? <laughs> about infomercials. Uh, Byron and then Janet. Okay, Byron. 
the infomercials is on television. On television. Okay. Do you know the meaning of infomercials? Those are, they usually advertise a product. It's it's like, a, it's a TV ad that's usually kind of long. It usually lasts like two to three minutes and they usually advertise a product. Uh, maybe you have seen it. At the beginning, there's there's always like somebody doing something and say, are you tired of this happening to you, right? And then a person having a lot of trouble doing something. And it's usually in black and white, okay, with an X like, eh, okay. So this product is for you, right? And then they tell you about the product and, and they show you how it works. And, and, and there are people uh, speaking positively about it. And they try to give you like uh, all the reasons why you should get it. Sometimes they say like, call this number, okay? And they they tell you they accept uh, cash, credit cards and all forms of payment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the infomercials, okay? Um, they were more common in the past, much more common in the past. Uh, what about uh, neon signs? Janet, Janita. Um, on the streets or highways? On the streets or highways. That is correct. Okay, that's where you find the neon signs. What are the neon signs? You know, si uh, signs, I'm sorry, uh, made up of neon lights. Okay, so neon signs. Uh, made to be seen at night. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Jeanette, what about the next one? Pop-up ads. What is a pop-up ad? I mean, where can you find it? Raise your hand if you know the answer, please. Pop-up ads. Okay, uh, Jose Raivin. And then Noemi, and then, uh, okay. Pop-up ads on the internet, teacher. On the internet, okay. So what is a pop-up ad? Okay, you're on a website and suddenly like a small window appears. Is that a window exactly? Because it's inside the, the main window, but it appears just like that. Oh, okay, and you close it. And then whoop, another appears and you close it. So those are pop-up ads. They're called pop-up ads because they literally pop up, okay? Like popcorn. So that's what it is. Okay, Noemi Alicia, what about spam? On the internet. On the internet, yeah. It's spam is on the internet, okay? It's like that, in particular emails, okay, that you never requested and that you receive, uh, and they usually inform you about some sort of uh, product or service, okay, that you may or may not be interested in. Okay, that's spam. Okay, good. Um, for the next one, you have telemarketers. What about telemarketers? about telemarketers. If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Okay, um, let's see. Um, I'm just gonna give the chance right now to Gabriela Sequeira because she hasn't participated today. But the rest of you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Gabriela hasn't participated. Thank you. Um, telemarketers is on the phone. On the phone, yeah, on the telephone. Telemarketers are those people who call you like, hello, uh, am I speaking to this and this person? We're calling you from this company, et cetera, et cetera, to offer you this product because you're a premium customer and you have had an excellent use and, and, and management of your credit card. Therefore, we're here to offer this product to you and this service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to listen to them. Sometimes you're interested, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you have to tell them, no, thank you. Uh, and they keep, and they insist. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, they're doing their job, of course. Okay. But those are the telemarketers. Okay. Pretty much people who call you directly to offer you a product or service. Um, thank you very much. What about uh, text messaging? Where do you see text messaging? If you know the answer, please raise your hand. Reina Isabel. On the telephone. On the telephone, absolutely. Okay, yeah. There isn't much to say about it, so yeah, on the telephone. And a la Filomena, the last one, voicemail. Easy. On the telephone. On the cell phone. <laughs> yeah, on the telephone, yeah. Uh, do you ever listen to voicemail? I don't. Okay, when somebody calls me, I mean, because the people I know never leave, you know, voice messages, like, like uh, voicemail, never. They never do. So every time uh, I get on, on uh, uh, you know, a notification on the phone saying that I have voicemail, I always ignore it. It's like, I don't care. Okay. 
<laughs> so it's always like that. Anyway, so that's voicemail. So you have the forms of communication classified in the four categories. In television, you have crawls and infomercials on the internet, banner ads, pop-up ads, and spam on the telephone, telemarketers, text messaging, and voicemail. And on street or uh, highways, you have billboards, bus wraps, flyers, and neon signs. Okay, um, we're just going to discuss the questions uh, about this vocabulary right here tomorrow because we don't have any more time. It's already nine and two. So just let me uh, call attendance one more time. See, uh, Cesar Alexander Ramirez. Are you here, Cesar Alexander? Debbie Natalia, <laughs> I'm sorry? Uh, Debbie Natalia Segura. Debbie Natalia Segura Ramos. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Francisco Alberto, Alberto. Online tonight? No, no, no. Okay. Um, that's it. That's the last one. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. Tomorrow we're going to cover a new grammar topic and also we're going to finish this section. Um, thank you for your attention and good night. Bye, thank teacher. You. Thank good you. Night, bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Take care.